Hey, good morning. Uh, welcome to our uh, daily uh, reflections as we dig into God's Word together. I mentioned to you last uh, Friday uh, that um, we're going to be kind of moving along. This is our VBS week here at St. Matthew's. So uh, what I want to do this week is I want to, I thought it'd be fun for us as adults to also reflect upon the passages that our kids will be learning. Uh, we're used doing a VBS this year called uh, Hero Central, Hero Hotline, Hero Hotline. Um, so our kids will be um, be learning about superheroes in the Bible, if you will. So we're going to be looking at some real heroes in Scripture. And it'll be fun for us as adults to, to learn about some heroes as well. So today we're going to be... Um, uh, looking at the first day's lesson, which is called Jesus Builds a Team. So we're going to be looking at from at John chapter 1. Um, be John 1, 35 through 51. John 1, 35 through 51, um, where Jesus builds his team. Uh, so let's read this. John 1, 35 through 51. The next day, John was again standing with two of his disciples, John being John the Baptist. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here's the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this. They followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him in that time, with, that, with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom my, Moses in the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of, God, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything come good come out of Nazareth? Philip said, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So we see here in these passages here from John, we see the calling of four of the twelve disciples. We see Andrew and, and Simon Peter. And then we see uh, Philip and Nathaniel. We see Jesus called these four, and we see that he begins to put together uh, his disciples. And there, there's a lot of interesting things that we can unpack about Jesus and the disciples here. Um, I, I love the, the group that Jesus puts together. I love how they come from different places in the people of Israel. Uh, when you see the full list of them, you see tax collectors and zealots who were individuals in that culture who would have been enemies with each other. Um, you see fishermen. You see all manner of people. Um, but I think what is interesting about these ones we see, Andrew and Peter, then uh, uh, Philip and Nathaniel. Um, first of all, I'm always impressed by John the Baptist in John's Gospel. Because in, in that day, John would have been a, a very well-known and highly regarded teacher. Uh, people came out to hear him preach and teach to be baptized by him. And when Jesus came along, you know, he could have been, uh, he could have been jealous. Because some of his disciples followed Jesus. It could have been very easy for him to say, no, no, don't follow Jesus. Stay with me, you know, stay with me. But John, throughout his, his teaching in, in, in John's gospel, and by the way, John, the gospel of is written by the apostle John, not John the Baptist, just so we're clear on that. Um, but John the Baptist says consistently throughout John's gospel that, no, he is here to point to Jesus. And he has that great line where he says, I must decrease and he must increase. So I'm always amazed at John's devotion to Jesus and how he understands that his job is not to be the primary person in the story. But his job is to point to Jesus. And I think that's a great example for all of us, y'all. 
It's so easy for us to think that we're the hero of our own story. You know, talking about hero central. We're not the hero of our story. Jesus is the hero of our story. So the main hero that we need to emulate, the main hero that we need to look to, the, the hero who saves the day is not going to be me or you, but the hero who saves the day is going to always be Jesus. Now, Jesus uses us to do amazing things. Jesus uses us to do heroic things. Jesus uses us and places us in positions where we can do that. Let's always be very careful to understand and to tell others that the hero of our story is not me, it is not you, but the hero of the story is always Jesus. So today he calls Andrew and Andrew leaves John and goes to Jesus and then Andrew goes and gets Peter. And likewise, he um, finds Philip and calls Philip and then Philip goes to Nathaniel and Nathaniel follows Jesus. So I like here that we see Jesus calls someone and then when Jesus calls this person, this person then goes to another person and says, hey, come with me and meet Jesus. Y'all, that's how evangelism works. That, that's how it works in that those of us in our lives who have been affected by and changed by Jesus, those of us who follow Jesus, our job is to go and find someone else, introduce them to Jesus, to point them to Jesus, to let them know that Jesus is the one who can change their lives. Nothing else. There are no other false gods or false, false philosophies that can change your life. Only Jesus Christ can change your life in this way. So Jesus calls Andrew, he calls Philip. Andrew goes to get Peter. Philip goes to get Nathaniel. And with this, he begins to build this team of these disciples. And they are going to be the ones who are going to become the apostles, who will organize the church, who will structure the church, and will help us today, those of us who are Christian today, will be the ones who, who make sure that we have a church today because they organize it and we have the faith handed to us by the apostles. So um, Jesus shows us here in this passage here the importance of having a team and the importance of having others beside us. Jesus always throughout his ministry, always throughout his ministry had a team with him. We, he, and his team had layers. He had uh, Peter, James, and John, the ones he was closest to. Then he had the 12 apostles. Then he had uh, the followers. And then he had the crowd, you know, the, he, he, he had many with him at all times. You know, we see in the Gospels, at one point he sent out the 12 two by two. Another time he sent out the 70 two by two. So there are these 70 who were not apostles, but who were very close to him and who followed him closely and who were among his closest group. Then he had the crowds who followed him at all times. Jesus, Jesus always had a group with him. And, and I think it's so easy. It's so easy for us in church Um it's so easy for us to just want to do our faith by ourselves. Uh, John Wesley said, you, the Bible does not speak of solitary religion. Um, we need a group around us. I know I do. I know I've got several groups around me. I have my staff, my team, but I've got a group of clergy that I meet with weekly. And we pray for each other and we encourage each other. We support each other. We text throughout the week. I have other other clergy friends that I, that I lean on for advice and wisdom and support and accountability. I try to do the same thing. I try to be a, a support and a friend to those who need me. Uh, we don't walk this path alone because this path is hard. This path is hard. And if we're walking by ourselves, we're going to be more likely to fall. We're going to be more likely to, when we do fall, to not be able to get back up. We need the support of a group. Jesus put together his apostles. And yes, he needed their talents and their abilities, but he also knew that they were going to need each other because there are going to be great days. He tells Nathaniel, you're going to see amazing things. You're going to see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. You're going to see amazing things. But he also knew they'd have hard days. They would see him betrayed and crucified. They knew he was going to have challenging moments and hard times. They were going to have challenging moments and hard times, and they were going to suffer as well. And he knew that they couldn't walk it alone, but that they needed each other. So one of the very first things Jesus does is he puts together a team. So today in your life, who's your team? Today in your life, who are your people? Today in your life, who can you turn to in times of trial and trouble? I hope that team is your church. I hope it's your Sunday school. I know, I hope it's your family. I hope you have a group of believers around you who in difficult days or in challenging days or in hard days that you can turn to them and they can support you 
and they can pray for you and they can be there for you. Jesus put together a team because he needed what they could give. He needed them, but he knew they needed each other as well. So Jesus put together a team that was going to serve him, follow him, love him, keep his commandments, and organize the church. He put together this amazing team. Today, friends, who's your team? Who are your people? We all need people. And if you don't have people, I'd love to help you find some people, whether it be here at church or wherever. But we all need somebody around us. So today we see Jesus put his team together, put his people together. Who are your people? Tomorrow we're going to look at a story from Exodus about the Hebrew midwives. It's one of the more interesting stories in the Old Testament. Uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, the, the Bible school lesson calls it God's Wonder Women. So tomorrow we're going to look at the Hebrew midwives and their story in, uh, in Exodus. So I uh, can't wait to unpack that with you. Thanks for uh, being here with us today. I hope you enjoy these. I'm looking forward to walking through our VBS lessons with you in this season. Uh, thanks for joining with us. Have a great day.